In the last video I did, I spoke on Burn Cats and his turbulent life and career, unveiling the crazy story hiding just under the surface of the well-known rapper. But Kaz's story isn't the only one worth telling, as his brother and fellow Triple Nine mob member, Drown Millie, has a lot of history behind him as well. So that's what we're here to do today, look into the life and career of Drown Millie. Drown Millie was born March 28, 1998 in Amityville, not far from the Amityville Horror House, made infamous by the murders committed there in the 70s. Many would consider the neighborhood good and upstanding, but to Millie, it was anything but. Growing up in a small apartment with a single mother and two brothers, he saw his fair share of violence. At the age of five, his oldest brother was arrested and locked up for multiple years, taking him out of Millie's life before he even got a chance to know him. Millie's mom would often spend long nights working to provide for her children, and when Millie wasn't with his dad in Brooklyn listening to all types of rock and rap music, he was spending time with a kind older woman who would watch over him and his brother when his mother wasn't around. He would even grow to see her as his grandmother over time. Unfortunately, this peace wouldn't remain as by the age of nine, he had the veil of innocence ripped away before his very eyes when he saw a man shot and killed on the street. This event left Millie heavily scared, leading him to shut down emotionally. It also kept him from forming many connections throughout his early middle school days, choosing rather to stay alone. At the same time though, his love for music never wavered, becoming a fan of Soldier Boy, even remixing some of his songs and releasing them on YouTube. This got many of his classmates to notice him for the first time and got him the reputation around school as the local rapper. Around the same time, Burn Kaz would step into the picture, hoping to recruit Millie into his rap group. At first, Millie didn't mess with Kaz, but he would warm up to him as time went on, eventually becoming friends. Millie would describe Kaz in his younger years as a super rambunctious kid that was always fighting people, which would be the complete opposite of Drown Millie as he was more of a quiet kid that didn't really fuck with people like that. Kaz wouldn't step down though, instead challenging Millie to drop a freestyle, and if it was hot, then he would be accepted into the group, and if it was shit, he would get jumped. Millie would take this challenge on and ended up impressing Kaz, getting him accepted into the group that would later become the Triple Nine Mob, alongside members like Saw Supreme and Black Nasty. At first they would just freestyle around school recording their raps on a cheap camera Millie bought, but after a while, a teacher would notice them and saw potential in the boys. He had asked the boys to come in after school so they could record their tracks more professionally, eventually forming a club for the young rappers. This taught the mob how to use GarageBand and Audacity, as well as getting them access to real equipment like Blue Yeti mics. They would spend the next year recording tracks every day, focusing on building their rap personas over schoolwork, but by the end of grade 8, they knew it wasn't just going to be a hobby, they knew it was going to be a full-time passion. The only issue was, the school year was over. They were heading into high school, which meant the club was going to get disbanded, and without any access to recording equipment at home, they couldn't continue to rap, so they did the only sensible thing they could, and they stole one of the Blue Yeti microphones. Over the following summer, Kaz and Millie would pass the mic back and forth. One would keep it for a week and record a track, and then show it to the other. This would motivate the other one to go even harder on their track the next week. This would form a friendly rivalry of sorts between the two. As they entered high school, they would switch their styles from a classic New York type of rap style into a pop punk sound. Throughout their high school career, the two continued going hard at rap, starting their first sound cloud and begin to find their voice and style, eventually getting connected to artists like Kevin Axtract and touring throughout NYC, pushing their movement throughout the entire city. Even opening for artists like Xavier Wolf, Lil Pump, and Smoke Perp. The connections didn't stop there though, as Millie would also get to meet a young Tay K in 2016, letting him stay over at his Airbnb. At the time, Tay K only had one song, but Millie couldn't help but see star quality in him, as even at the age of 14, Tay K had six fully grown women following him around everywhere he went. And if that wasn't crazy enough, at the same time, Millie would connect to a pre-famed Doja Cat on the app known as Periscope, trolling her in her comments to the point she had to respond to him. And just like Tay K, he saw a star quality in her, asking to make a song together, which did eventually happen. Unfortunately, all three of the tracks the two recorded together would get scrapped, after a Twitter altercation went wrong, leading her to cut ties with Millie. That wouldn't slow him down though, as he would also become aware of a rising star around the time known as Zelikami. The two would eventually end up meeting in the studio, and Burn Kaz and him would record a track together. Things seemed to be going good for Millie, but just as the good came, bad also followed. When a couple of days after his 18th birthday, Day, his mother would receive a call, telling the family his father had passed away. This caused Millie to shut down in the following days after the unfortunate news. Just as he had with the prior murder he witnessed, he couldn't cope with the event. As the weeks rolled on, he began to unravel mentally, not wanting to exist in a world with such uncertainty. He began to indulge heavily in psychedelic drugs, hoping to escape from the pain he was feeling. He would describe this point of his life as a constant feeling of drowning, trying to fight to the top but being pulled under again and again. This is when he would change his name from Ali Millie to Drown Millie, fully embracing the feeling he was living with and creating exactly what he wanted for himself. Instead of choosing to just sink into the depths, he would instead pour his energy and negative emotions into his music, creating his song No Breaks, one of the rawest records he ever released. This song would boost his movement to the next level as fans really started to relate to the emotion Millie was able to put into his track. This is when some of the mob's most iconic tracks would be birthed, like Make Your Head Lean, Boof Back, and Die With Me, with the prior gaining 1 million plays across all platforms and turning Millie into a rising star in the underground. The song would get a co 
co-signed by Cray Sean as well as getting him a placement in Elevator Magazine. Millie wasn't one of those artists to just sit back and continue to exist off the clout from his first song, instead trying to go even crazier for his next release. This is when he would drop his song Die With Me, filming a whole sex tape music video and posting it on Pornhub. It would go on to get tons of attention, even gaining hundreds of thousands of plays on the site before later getting deleted. At this point, Elevator was becoming very interested in Millie, propositioning him to make a video for his song Make Your Head Lean. He would decline this offer instead choosing to film a video for Boof Pack so he could make Burn Kaz part of his blow up. This was the video that was infamously filmed by the then Elevator freelance videographer Takashi69. As the year went on, Millie's wave was growing, eventually getting countrywide. He would even get the attention of XXX and Tassian's fans, who would end up going after Millie claiming he was a clout chaser. They were completely unaware of the fact that Millie was actually running with the more aggressive style since 2014. Make Your Head Lean was just the first crack from Drown Millie to blow up with that type of style. All this newfound hate for Millie wouldn't really phase him though. He would instead see X as a friendly rival, just as he had with Burn Kaz in the past. And after all, all publicity is good publicity. And on top of that, around the same time, Take would come back into the picture, asking to stay with Millie for the next few days while he hid out from the cops. Millie would end up declining as he didn't have the place for him to stay at the time, but in a crazy turn of events, Take would end up performing on the streets of New York, doing the one and only live performance of the race before it was even released. But once again, just as the Triple Nine moniker says, when good things happen, bad is sure to follow, because not long after the Boof Pack video, Burncaz would be arrested on a gun charge. This ordinarily wouldn't be that big of a deal, but seeing as how he was on probation at the time, he ended up getting six years in prison. Before he was formally charged though, he was able to get out on bail and do one final tour with Millie in LA. Or that's what would have happened if the show hadn't fallen through because of some bad business on the promoter's part. Even worse than that, the two had spent all the remaining money to fly to LA. With no way of getting home, Drow Millie would do what he normally does and take a negative and turn it into a positive by deciding to set up shop in LA and create a new wave for himself there. Kaz on the other hand couldn't shake off the stress of the case, so he decided to head back to New York and deal with it himself. This left Millie as a solo artist in a new city with very few connections to speak of. That wouldn't stop him though because within a few months time he would drop his biggest hit ever, War Outside. This track would serve as an anthem to many locked up during the pandemic, but by the end of 2019, Millie would end up dropping the Triple Nine name as the late rapper Juice World was heavily connected to the number as well. Millie would see it as disrespectful to continue rolling with the number instead choosing to leave it with the fallen rapper. And that brings us up to the modern day where Drown Millie's movement is bigger than ever, performing at multiple Rolling Loud shows and gaining a worldwide appeal after performing in Germany. This Which artists are you most excited to see? Playboy Cardi, Ski Master, Slump God, Danny Towers, Poosh, and Drown Millie. The story of Drown Millie is definitely a crazy one, filled with both the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But throughout all that, he's continued on the same path, making new connections and discovering even more upcoming artists. It really is no coincidence that Millie met many of these rising stars before they ever had a buzz. He clearly has an eye for talent and definitely is a trendsetter himself. And with Burn Kaz coming home next year, there's no doubt my mind the two are going to rise to the very top of the rap game, finally getting the respect and attention they deserve. So shout out Drown Millie, Free Burn Kaz, and shout out Knife Gang. If you've watched to the end of this video, you already know the drill, leave a knife emoji in the comments below so I know that you did. And of course, if you want to be really cool, you can also subscribe because I'm trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. So if you can help me get there, I would truly appreciate you. And anyone who has subscribed in the past, I appreciate you as well. And with all that said, I also have a Discord server, so if you want to join that, you know, link in the bio below. But besides that, thanks for watching. Bye.